Hi guys and welcome to Motoscotti. In this video I want to address a few things regarding the kit dashboard. Ever since I've been publishing videos on my YouTube channel about the kit restoration, my kit replica project, people have been asking me throughout the different episodes when I was about to start with the kit dashboard. Well, the short answer is never. I'm a die-hard Knight Rider fan. I love the LEDs and the buttons you can push and the noises it makes from the series, the turbo boost and the ski mode or whatever it is, and the screens with the animations on it. And all of this brings back childhood memories. But I have to tell you, I'm a car guy even more so than I am a Knight Rider fan. And for me, it's important to use my car kit regularly and also to use it to take it on extended trips. And all of these nice things, which makes it important for me to have all of the basic the normal car functionalities functioning. And having the kit dashboard just brings a couple of constraints with it. First of all, and that's the biggest one for me, is the HVAC system. I'm driving my car from April till October. And now in the summer, in July, August, it can get really hot, like 30 to 34 degrees here in uh, Western continental Europe. For me, it's impossible to go on extended trips, like I've been to Paris this year, 1400, 1500 kilometers round trip. It's impossible for me to drive this on the freeway without the functioning AC and all the vents have to work. So if you have the kit dashboard, that would just cover it up. So that's one thing. I mean, in the winter, it's not really a big deal because I don't drive the car in the winter or try not to drive it when there's salt on the road or snow or any of that. Like I've been driving it this year, the first time in, February, but it was really dry. I'm never worried about getting enough heat in a cabin. It's more about cooling it down in the summer. And also the second thing is that with all the glass in the car, with the T-tops, the glass T-tops and, and the big rear glass hatch, like it does get hot really quickly and really strongly in this car. So you do need functioning AC if you're on the freeway for hundreds and hundreds of kilometers or miles. It's not an option for me to drive with the windows down and I need functioning AC. That's it. The second constraint for me is the switch pods. Well, I'm an average size man with 1 meter 74 centimeters. There are people much taller than I am and still drive with the switch pods probably and they are okay with it. But for me, I would just, I think I would just get in and out and, and hit the switch pods here if they were here. Would have to be careful not to hit, hit them with my knees and then break them or break off the fiberglass or, or take off a couple of buttons. And that's something it's just not very convenient if you actually drive the car and not just have it as a as a show car, as a display car. But that's just my opinion. The third issue I have with the kit dashboard is not the dashboard itself, but the gull wing. The steering wheel, the kit gull wing. Well, the thing is that it's a bit larger than a normal steering wheel in diameter and it makes it a bit difficult to avoid an obstacle in case of an emergency. Also because you can't really reach around, you, you, you can't really have that impact on the steering at the same as quickly as you can have it with a normal round steering wheel. Okay, I know you probably don't like this steering wheel here, this uh, late third, C, uh, third gen airbag steering wheel with the taxi driver cover. I know, but that's a different subject. I ha just haven't found something that I actually really like more than that. It's not that I really like this, but I haven't found any, I haven't seen anything that I prefer. Going back to the Goldwing, it's just not something that I can drive on the road because it's illegal in Switzerland. Of course it's illegal, like many things are when it comes to cars. But an acquaintance of mine actually used to have a kit replica and he was driving with the full dashboard and the gullwing and he got caught by the police and he actually got a criminal record for this because that is apparently highly illegal and if you have a criminal record in Switzerland it stays registered for 10 years which can be an issue let's say if you are looking to rent an apartment and you sometimes they they want to see your criminal record and if you have something marked in there it might uh, refrain them from giving you renting them out your the apartment or even if you want to buy a house or, or get a loan at the bank so it just has serious consequences for something as stupid as just a gobbling steering wheel for your replica. But that wouldn't really be an issue for me because I wouldn't have it on when I'm driving on the road anyways. But obviously many of you are using quick releases to switch between a round normal steering wheel and the gullwing from kit. If you're just on a show or at home and just want to have the gullwing on and if you're on the road you have the normal steering wheel off. But the quick release system is illegal in Switzerland also. And I just don't want to have a steering wheel puller handy all the time to make this annoying 
manipulation between the two steering wheels. I mean, obviously you can say, okay, many things are illegal, but who cares as long as they don't catch you. So that's up to you. I don't want to incite you to anything illegal, but I'm just saying you might think of my reaction like this also, like, ooh, everything is illegal, let's not do it. It's up to each and every one of you to gauge what risks you want to take, but then also you need to take the responsibility for your actions. Last but not least, there is the center section of Kit's dashboard, which is just sticking out a little bit too far for my taste. Not towards the driver because the dashboard is completely driver oriented or as they said the pilot also with the two screens or the one screen depending on which one you have. But it's protruding a little bit too much the space of the passenger in my taste. And since I'm not always just by myself in kids with my wife and I we're going places together. So it's just not taking into the account that much the fact of having a passenger. But again don't get me wrong if your main goal is to get a kid replica absolutely do it because for many people the dashboard is the main identity of the car of kit should i say i've seen people build a kit dashboard they didn't even have a firebird they bought it they built it into some kind of other coupe they had but for them the kit's identity is more through the dashboard through the voice box and all that than through the car itself and for me it's always been the shape of the cars the firebird uh, the black car the coupes, the V8, that's actually what's given me the spark, my the interest in cars. The dashboard actually always came second though. I mean, I, when I started to build this project or when I started this project and I had a, every intention of uh, building the dashboard as well, the kit dashboard, but as I got th into the project, I just didn't really feel like I was missing anything without it. Even now when I'm driving this, it's just not something that I that I'm missing. Eventually my brother-in-law actually had an idea and thought of what about a 21st century version of kids dashboards. I mean they've been talking about remakes for years and years and years and of course they've had a few remakes done but I mean an actual remake with David Hasselhoff and everyone's asking for the original kit but I w I've been thinking and so has my brother-in-law if they were to make a remake with Kit and bring back the original car, would they actually bring back the same dashboard with all the 80 style buttons and screen and, and, and sounds? Because, I mean, let's face it, we live in a world today where every car has either a minimalistic dashboard with uh, like a Tesla with nothing in it and just a big screen and touch screens where you just don't need all these buttons anymore. So what about a... 21st century dashboard in this original car that respects all the functionalities of the factory car with the ventilations with that make, make it makes it comfortable for everyone but it's still a cool kit dashboard and keeps a few elements like the voice box but in the modern style so my brother-in-law who is a graphic designer he got in touch with another designer a french designer called Germain Caniza Germain went to work and uh, did the first sketch of the the dashboard and got feedback from my brother-in-law and the whole thing is they didn't show me any of that because my brother-in-law wanted to give me this as a christmas present so he just asked me a few things on what i would like to see in the new style of 21st century kit dashboard if it ever were to happen just as a concept and so I gave him a few tips what I really like to see I mean I, I definitely wanted to keep the kit voice box somewhere this is this is a key identity element of uh, kit and we've seen it and uh, the different remakes they've always tried to uh, bring it back in some way I mean there was the Night Industries 4000 in the Night Rider 2000 movie which didn't really have the voice modulator somehow something always needs to be there as a voice modulator so we had that and then I also got inspired by the instrument binnacle from the Peugeot 508 yeah because I really like that one the dashboard itself is something that I find really appealing also the modern dashboard which in my opinion could even be a kit dashboard from the 21st century because it's slightly also driver focused with the center section but anyhow I told him why don't you take the binnacle from that car and integrate it into the drawing of the 21st century kit dashboard so they took that into a, a, into account and then they went through different stages at the beginning a few things were too round and then they they made it a little more angular to make it work with the the rest of the design here because the, the side parts of the original factory dashboards are also a little bit angular so they went through it step by step and then 
this is the final result they came up with. The steering wheel is an actual wheel. Gone is the gullwing, but it does have the Knight logo in the middle. I would have probably gone with a three spoke instead of this multi spoke wheel. Behind it, of course, is the binnacle of the 508, which is one big LCD screen and thus can show whatever it's programmed for. I think the shape fits perfectly for this car. Next, we have the voice modulator in the center section behind the two vents and one screen just underneath that. The button and switch cluster underneath it looks like it came straight out of a Lamborghini Aventador. Not a bad choice of inspiration if you ask me. The eagle eye viewer will recognize the factory HVAC controls at the bottom, just to give it a little reminder of what it is all based on. The gear lever appears to have a metal finish. I think I would have preferred to keep the 82 shifter knob. It fits better with the lines of the dashboard and it's another iconic element of Knight Rider. But overall, I really like it. I think it's a really nice basis to bring Kit's dash into the 21st century while keeping the essence of Kit. What do you think? I'd really like to hear your opinion on whether you have a Kit replica and you have chosen to do the, the real Kit dashboard as it is seen in the series or if you've decided to do go against it, or I mean go against it and just leave it stock, or if you've made some uh, custom dashboard that you've built yourself, I've even seen a kit dashboard that was actually flat, for the reasons I've mentioned before, and which looks cool also, so I'd really like to get your feedback on what is it you prefer and what is your opinion towards the whole dashboard thing, like should it stay stock, should it stay, should it, should it be built like it was in the series, what do you think of that 21st century concept dashboard that I got given by my brother-in-law and, and this French designer Jean-Marc Leave it down below in the comment sections. It would be fun to start a discussion about it. So thank you very much for watching. Stay tuned for more content and see you next time.